Hey, my name is Steven, and I'm gonna be showing you how to use the Lumen PMP Paste Extruder Beta Kit. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to mount the kit onto your Lumen PMP and give you a place to start software-wise for controlling the extruder and using it for whatever you wanna use it for. First, we'll take a look at what comes inside the kit. The contents you're gonna see is based on when we first started selling the kit. This might evolve and change a bunch, so if what you see here doesn't look like exactly what you got, use the product page for reference, because we might change what comes with the kit and all that kind of stuff. And that's why it's a beta. All right, so first thing are two syringe assemblies. These use lure lock syringes and they have a gear and a piston with a threaded rod attached to it. Two of these come with the kit and you'll also find three nozzle tips. These are also lure lock. They just pop right in with a twist. I'll show you this in a second into the tip of the actual extruder. I believe these are 20 gauge that we ship with, but you can buy these anywhere. Just go Amazon, McMaster car, whatever, and search lure lock tips. You can find a whole bunch. Uh, this is just to give you something to get started with. Then you'll find this printed assembly. This is actually what gets bolted onto the Z gantry. It holds the extrusion motor and it clamps in the paste syringe assembly. This is kind of the core central part of it. There's a couple prints in here with a bolt and a nut. A couple little parts already preloaded in there for you. And the last thing is the motor assembly, which is this. This is a NEMA 11 stepper motor with a press fit gear on the spindle here. And then inside this little blue thing on the side is a PCB that just adapts it to the connector that will fit with your aluminum PMP out of the box. You'll notice that we've preloaded the bolts for this stepper motor in here. The reason we didn't pre-mount this into the other frame piece is because you kind of need the motor to not be in there to mount it onto the Z gantry. So we just put them here for safekeeping. Cool, now we're going to take off the right Z gantry for the Lumen PMP. I have a V4 here that I'm gonna be using for this, but it should be more or less the same for V2 and V3. Let's do it. The only thing you should need for this whole process is a set of metric Allen keys. I mean, that's pretty much everything you need to get all of this ready to go and mounted onto your machine. Before we actually dive in, you need to make sure your machine is off. If you're plugging and unplugging stepper motors while the machine is on, that is bad news. So just double check that your machine is not connected to power, USB or normal barrel jack, no power going in your machine before you get going. It could also be handy to have a set of snips if you have some zip ties you wanna cut as well. First thing is getting the right tool head on your Lumen PMP off. Depending on if you have V2, V3, or V4, this is gonna vary a little bit on how you go about doing it. For the V4, I actually need to remove my CP40 holder, my nozzle tip holder, uh, before I can get to the screws that mount the NEMA 11 on there. So I'm just gonna twist this off first, and I actually might need some pliers to get a grip on it. Or vice grips. There we go. Cool, so now that I have this out, I can access the four screws that mount the NEMA 11 uh, hollow shaft stepper into the frame. Let me get my Allen key and get going on those. And in parallel, you can also be uh, disconnecting any cable harnesses that you have and the pneumatic lines. All versions of the Lumen PMP have a press fit pneumatic line. So this little blue ring at the top, you just press down on it. Make sure you're supporting the motor underneath so you're not pushing on the whole gantry. And then when you're holding down on that ring, you can just pull out on the tubing and it'll come free. I'm gonna cut the zip tie holding my cable in place and unplug the cable too. There we go. Cool. It can be easier to unplug the cable into your motor after you've removed it from the Z gantry. So I'm gonna wait to do that. Cool, so that's my fourth screw. My motor's a little loose here so I can take it out and then unplug the cable harness. We're actually going to use this cable for the paste head, which is pretty handy. I highly recommend taking all these screws and threading them lightly back into the motor so you don't lose them if you wanna switch back to the normal pick head at some point later. And same thing with the CP40 holder, your nozzle tip holder, just to keep it all in one nice, neat little sub-assembly for if you ever want to put it back on your machine. So here is your whole stack for your right pneumatic head. Just set this aside, we're done with this for now. Now we're gonna remove the normal Z gantry. There's just four screws holding this in place. These will be reused with the paste head, so make sure to hang on to these. So I'm gonna get these guys out. All right, so now you got your Z gantry. Take the, whoop, don't drop them, and hang on to these four screws just holding it in, and then you can set this aside with the rest of your right Z gantry, pneumatic Z gantry. And now we're gonna start mounting stuff onto this. So on V4, it's blue, but this back plate is actually what bolts into the rail, the right uh, Z linear rail for the Z axis. And this is where we're gonna mount this guy. So you can see it's actually a very similar hole pattern on the inside of this. And that's what's gonna mount right onto your right Z gantry. So what I'll do is I'll preload uh, just a couple screws in here just so I can get it mounted on there pretty easily. I'll just do one to start and I'll line it up and tap it in. 
just loosely because you still got to get the other few in. Also, as you're tightening them, make sure that it looks as close to up and down as possible. Give it a little rotation if need be and tack it into place with a tight screw. Do what you can to get it as perpendicular to your X and Y axes as possible. Now that that is mounted in, you can go ahead and just make sure you get a full range of motion here. Now we are going to mount the extrusion motor in. So we're gonna start by removing the four screws in the top of the motor. Cool. And once you get all four of those out, just set them aside, and you're gonna take this and you're gonna slide it up inside of here, like that. And there are four spots to drop the screws in you just took out, and use those to hold it down in place. I'll use one on the front to kind of hold it in place while I'm getting these back ones in. There's holes in the top side of this that will help, uh, help let you get it through. And make sure you can rotate this and it's not hitting anything or getting in the way. It should have pretty good clearance, so it really shouldn't be an issue, but just give it a check before you go too much further. Excellent. So now we're gonna mount one of these guys in here. So the way these get clamped in place is just with a single screw and kind of a swing arm mechanism that holds it in place. So I'm gonna get up one Allen key size bigger and I'm gonna undo this screw here. And once I get it out, this print is actually gonna rotate away like this and it's gonna open up a little spot where the extruder can go. This is just an individual loose piece. This little S shape actually hooks in to this void right here. So you kind of have to like curl it in like that and then that clamps it in place and one screw will clamp it in pretty well. So for now, we're just going to set this aside with the bolt in it and we're gonna get one of these from our bag. And I'm also gonna grab one of these paste extruder tips here as well. Now, if you have paste that's already in a syringe, uh, with a lure lock adapter, a lot of solder paste will come with a syringe tip, a lure lock uh, tip on the end. You can buy these little adapters uh, that you can kind of make them connect uh, point to point. And as you extrude one in, you can have the other one pull out. So you can kind of like load it in from this end, which is really clean. And I recommend doing that if what you're getting is already in a syringe. If not, you can just take this subassembly out, fill your syringe as needed, and then push this back in. This definitely will introduce air and it will make it harder to extrude things cleanly, but it is an option. And it's what I did for a lot of my testing. All this really is, is the normal uh, syringe tip that comes with the lure lock on a little print that just has a buck that's about the same, same shape that I modeled based on the normal syringe that comes with this. Uh, and I just put it on, just pops on like that. And then this print is just glued onto a 70 millimeter long M3 threaded rod. And then this is just a printed gear that has a nut press fit in there, really press fit in there. <laughs> uh, and that's it, that's the whole thing. So if you need to make more of these, it's very easy. The, the whole design is based on the McMaster Car 3 milliliter. Uh, it's listed in the bill of materials on the uh, uh, repo, uh, but it's all based on this model. This is one of the chonkier ones. So if you buy other syringes, three milliliter syringes, it should work pretty comparatively but it's been tested with the McMaster car ones. So I'm just gonna pretend I've already loaded this with some, some stuff. Uh, so I'm just gonna load it in like this and it will wobble around a little bit. That's totally okay. Uh, we actually correct for that in this part. We actually have a bunch of things that kind of clamp and hold this concentric with uh, the syringe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and put this in here and you can see there's a little slot right there. That's where you want the thumb grips, these little guys, they wanna pop right in like that. Now, as you do this, you might have to thread or unthread this screw so that it fits into this slot like this. So if you notice that it's a little too high, you might need to bring it down a little bit. Uh, the trick is you just want it to be able to pop in like that, that's good. And then this needs to be loose. And you can see as I turn this, it's spinning. You can just barely see it. As I'm turning this, we're actually spinning the motor there, which is great, that's what I wanna see. So press this in as well as you can. And then while we're holding it in, we're gonna take uh, our little clamp door guy and we're gonna rotate it in. And in general, if your screw is sticking all the way through, it's not gonna, there it goes, it's not gonna thread all the way in. So I usually will keep the screw all the way out or as much as I can. And then I'll hold it in and then the screw goes straight in like that. And then that makes sure that the line, the axes of control is a little bit more straightforward. And now we can clamp this in. You don't have to super crazy do it, but like I'll usually give it a little wiggle on the bottom and see if it still feels loose, I'll keep tightening it. And at one point you'll notice, all right, it's as I'm moving this, I'm actually moving the whole gantry. It's on there pretty good and there's no wiggle. And there you go. Oh, I forgot to put my nozzle tip on, but you can just do this at any point in time. You just twist it in. It's a really cool system. Lure lock is awesome. And now you can see when I turn this screw, it's also driving on the motor side, which is exactly what I want. And we have this top part is holding the screw from pushing in this direction. 
and then this little uh, bit on the door, the clamp door, is keeping the screw from pushing out that direction. So it's pretty well constrained in here. And that's it. Next up is wiring, and this is really easy. All we're gonna do is take the cable and we're going to plug it directly into the connector that's visible on the side of the stepper motor. Just like that. And that's it. <laughs> that's the whole thing. We use the same connector and everything. Uh, there is a little trick that I'll do too where I'll use the tubing, because we're not using this tubing anymore. Uh, and I'll just zip tie it to this to just kind of keep the, the wire up and out of the way a little bit. And this works pretty well, so I'm gonna get a zip tie. But honestly, you don't really have to do this. It's gonna stay out of the way pretty well anyway. The routing from the back on a V4 is pretty good. You might wanna do this with a V2 or V3. Look at that, nice and clean, huh? That's so cool. <laughs> Excellent, we are loaded up, and now it's time to turn on the machine and connect and make sure everything's working the way it should be. All right, so I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can control the paste extruder. The first one is just using the debug tool. This is a little web utility that we made to just kind of puppeteer the Lumen PMP specific for the controls that it expects. Uh, but this is just to mess around with it and test if stuff's working correctly. Uh, it runs all in browser. You don't need to download anything. Just go to debug.opula.io uh, and connect your Lumen PMP to your machine. Make sure it's powered on. Hit connect. And oh, well, it'd help if I plugged it in, huh, Haas? There we go. So now it finds the Lumen PMP, just connected to the serial port, it uses web serial. Uh, it's really cool that this is even possible. So I'll hit connect, and you can see that I've sent a whole bunch of starting G code to the machine, which is configuring the vacuum sensor, setting a speed. Um, that's mainly it. Uh, and then we get the OK back from the machine. So this means that we're hearing back from Marlin here. Um, so I can actually go ahead and like turn stuff on, turn on off ring lights, read vacuum sensor data, all that kind of stuff. Get our values there. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, but what I'm going to do is show you how you can control uh, this head from this interface. So this is considered in the realm of Marlin as the B motor. So when you're sending G-code to it, just like you'd say, like G0 is the command for move to position. Uh, so if I wanted to move the head, actually let's G28 to home first. G28 and that homes all axes. We'll home like that, and that's perfect. So the first thing we're gonna do is check the current going to all the motors. So by default, we send 200 milliamps to each of the, the L and R, or the A and B, as Marlon thinks about them, stepper motors. Uh, this might be enough for what you're trying to extrude, but you might wanna bump it up a little more. Uh, I've been able to push this motor to five or 600 for short periods of time. I think four is a pretty good safe baseline. Uh, but M906, uh, is going to give you what the current is that all the stepper drivers are sending out. And you can see, confusingly, that calls it I and J here, but it's actually A and B when we send it uh, things for, uh, like, actually have, sending commands to move it. Um, so I might want to bump this 200 up to 400 here. And confusingly, if you actually send M906 J400, it does not change it. You have to use A or B. So I'm going to use M906 B400. And you can see if I run M906 again, now our current is at 400. So if you're pushing the limits on what you're trying to extrude, you might want to go with 400. Uh, so take that for what it is. Uh, in some tests, I would actually, only when I was doing extrusion that was particularly difficult, I'd bump it up to like 600 for like half a second and I'd bring it back down. So you can play around with it a little bit, but your mileage may vary. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's actually have it move a little bit. So if I do G0, B, 20. I'm going to send that. And you can see it moved a lot, uh, which is good. We're moving it. We're extruding stuff. Uh, but right now we're in absolute mode. So if I send G0 B20 again, nothing's going to happen because it's in position 20. Uh, so I could do G0 B40, and that's going to retract actually uh, 20. I believe this is uh, degrees of rotation, so this unit is kind of arbitrary. Uh, so this just retracted 20 degrees, but you may not want that. So you could select G91, and that puts you in relative mode. So now if I do G0, B, I'm going to do negative 20 to extrude 20. It will move negative 20, but if I hit the up arrow and go back to my last command and hit it again, you'll see it also does the same thing again. So this is all relative movements, but be warned if you're also sending G0, X20, it's not gonna move to position 20, it's gonna move 20 over from where it is now. So just be aware of your G91, and then if you wanna go back to absolute mode, it's G90. Of course, you can also do G0Z20 or so to move to different positions, that's up. If I go to 50, that's down. This is where you might extrude. Uh, so this is just kind of testing to make sure everything works and sending some manual G-code over to it. 
Uh, but what we're going to do now is go into an actual script that uses a library that I wrote called Leash, which makes it really easy to control the Lumen PMP using Python. So here's Leash. It's as easy as importing the library, which you can do directly with Git. We don't have it on PyPy yet, but you can just install it this way or use UV or whatever other Python tool you want. Uh, you import the Lumen class, make an instance of it, and then you can start doing stuff. And I have some docs here about how to use it, uh, but what I'm gonna do is show you how to use Leash. Okay, so here I have the repository open for the paste extruder itself. So this is the repository where uh, the little label on your bag is gonna send you. So if you go to software extrude, in here there's a Python file called extrude.py uh, in a virtual environment. I use UV for a lot of my testing, so all the files that UV uses for running the Python stuff. And you can see I have from leash import lumen, uh, just like in the docs on the, the leash page. And we're gonna skip by, these are just hard-coded positions for paste extrusion. And here I make an instance of the lumen class and try and connect to it. I home it, I turn on the top light, and then this go to command will just move the head to an absolute position. Uh, if you want to send a interesting different custom command, you can use uh, lumen.sm, which is serial manager, and you can just directly access how I'm doing all the serial management. You can just send raw G code this way. So here you can see this is even me upping the current to 400 milliamps for that right motor. And what I'm also doing here is setting that the position of the B motor, the, the paste extruder, starts at zero. And then I'm also going to set my speed for the machine. Uh, this is a method of kind of using relative positioning uh, while you're in absolute mode in Marlin. So even though we've sent uh, G90 and it is an absolute position in Marlin's mind, uh, there is a, inside the Lumen class, uh, there's a dictionary called position. And every time you say go to, or you make the machine move, it keeps track of where it is in space. Uh, so you can just get the current position with lumen.position of B. So this is the current place where the Marlin and Leash thinks the Lumen is right now, and you can just say whatever that is, minus 300. So this is actually going to extrude 300 degrees of rotation, kind of arbitrary, but it will spin the motor 300 degrees effectively. And then Lumen.sleep is a method of making the machine truly stop. It's not sleeping in Marlin, it's not sleeping in just Python, because there's weird stuff with serial buffers. It makes sure that after this command is done, starting when that command is done, we wait 12 seconds. Uh, which is different than time.sleep or something, which is only Python doing that. We have kind of two concurrent processes running. So this sleep function, the lumen.sleep function, will just block for 12 seconds after this is done with the previous command. More instructions in the leash page as well if you want to read more into it. And then I move to safe Z, set the speed to be a little faster. And then all I do is I go through and I'm just setting a bunch of positions. So I'm going to an X position, a Y position, a Z position, and these are all just coming from the positions in my resistor and LED pads, but you can make this be whatever you want. You effectively have full and total control of the lumen at this point. You can jog it to positions, you can set speeds, you can delay, and you can see here, this is my actual extrude motion. I'm doing it a little slower, uh, and I'm extruding six degrees uh, with B. Wherever the current position of B is, I'm just doing six less than that. I do the same thing with pads, and then lumen.idle just jogs the head to the back. And that's it. If you want to do other things like turning on pumps and changing ring light control, LED color for the ring lights, uh, talking to feeders and all that kind of stuff, all that stuff is lightly implemented in Leash now. Uh, so using this, you should be able to do whatever you really want to do for extrusion. Uh, this will be definitely a good place for you to start for figuring out uh, how to actually get going with making this paste extruder move the way you want. And yeah, you can see here, my only dependency is Leash, which just pulls directly from GitHub. I'm constantly pushing, frankly, a lot of breaking changes because I'm working on getting Leash to be more robust and stuff. So if you don't want me pushing to affect what you're working on, you can also set it to be a specific hash. Or you can even clone the repository to your computer and install it as an editable install. pip install minus e, I believe is what it is. And then that will just make sure it installs it from the source on your computer. Because I'm making a lot of changes to Leash and improving it. So some stuff might tweak and change. So if you don't want it to break your stuff, that's a good approach. All right, that'll do it for this setup video. If you run into trouble or bugs or weird things happening with this hardware or even software, things with Leash or whatever, please do not hesitate to make a GitHub issue and just tag me in it directly. If you do something cool with this, please let me know. We have a Discord server. I'll make sure that there's a link in the repo so you can go join and like tell us what you're doing with this. I'm curious why you bought this thing from us. What are you using it for? What wacky stuff do you want to do with it? What improvement ideas do you have? I want to hear about it. And if there's something that would make using it easier or just anything, I want to hear about what you think about it and where you think it could be useful. Great. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for supporting open source and I'll see you later.